I'm not actually 100% sure why this yeah, came no, out. It's not obvious <laughs> to me either. It, it makes me feel like I'm missing something. I'm myself. missing something. <laughs> yeah, because there is a huge, even at Google and so on, YouTube uh, transcription. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's unclear. But some of it is also integrating into a bigger system. Yeah. That, so the user interface, how it's deployed and all that kind of stuff. Maybe running it as an independent thing is e much easier like an order of magnitude easier than deploying to a large integrated system like youtube transcription or um anything like meetings like zoom has trans uh transcription that's kind of crappy but creating a interface where it detects the different individual speakers it's able to um display it in compelling ways run it in real time all that kind of stuff maybe that's difficult I but that's the only explanation I have because like um, I'm currently paying uh, quite a bit for human uh, transcription and human caption right. annotation and like it seems like uh, there's a huge incentive to automate that yeah it's very confusing and I think I mean I don't know if you looked at some of the whisper transcripts but they're quite good they're good uh, <laughs> and especially in tricky cases yeah I've, I've seen uh, whispers performance on like super tricky cases and it does incredibly well so I don't know. A podcast yeah. is pretty simple. It's like high quality audio and you're speaking usually pretty clearly. Yeah. And so I don't know. It uh I don't know what open AI's plans are yeah. either. But yeah, there's always like fun fun projects basically. And uh, stable diffusion also is opening up a huge amount of experimentation, I would say, in the visual realm and genera generating images and videos and movies ultimately. Yeah, videos now. And so that's going to be pretty crazy. Uh, that's going to that's going to almost certainly work. And it's going to be really interesting when the cost of content creation is going to fall to zero. You used to need a painter for a few months to paint a thing, and now it's going to be speak to your phone to get your video. <laughs> so if Hollywood will start using that to generate scenes, um, which completely opens up. Yeah, so you can make a, a like a movie like Avatar, eventually for under a million dollars. Much less, maybe just by talking to your phone. I mean, I know it sounds kind of crazy. <laughs> And then there'd be some voting mechanism. Like, how do you have a net, like? Would there be a show on Netflix that's generated completely uh, automatedly? So uh, yeah, potentially, out. yeah. And what does it look like? Also, when you can just generate it on demand, and it's um, mm. and there's infinity of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, all the synthetic content. I mean, it's humbling because we we treat ourselves as special for being able to generate art and ideas and all that kind of stuff. If that can be done in an automated way by AI, yeah, I think it's fascinating to me how these uh, the predictions of AI and what it's going to look like and what it's going to be capable of are completely inverted and wrong. And uh, sci-fi of fifties and sixties are just like totally not right. They imagined AI as like super calculating theorem improvers and we're getting things that can talk to you about emotions. They can do art. It's just like weird. Are you excited about that future? Just AI's like hybrid systems heterogeneous systems of humans and AIs talking about emotions, Netflix and chill with an AI system, that's yeah. where the Netflix thing you watch is also generated by AI. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's going to be interesting for sure. <laughs> and I think I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, but it's not, it's not obvious. Well, the sad thing is your brain and, and mine developed in a time where um, before Twitter, before the uh, before the internet, so I wonder people that are born inside of it might have a different experience. Um, like I and maybe you can will still resist it, mm -hmm. uh, and the people born now will not. Well, I do feel like humans are extremely malleable. Yeah, and uh, you're probably right. What is the meaning of life, Andre? <laughs> <laughs> we we talked about sort of. The universe having a conversation with us humans or with the systems we create to try to answer for the universe to, for the creator of the universe to notice us we're trying to create systems that are loud enough to answer back i don't know if that's the meaning of life that's like meaning of life for some people the first level answer i would say is anyone can choose their own meaning of life because we are a conscious entity and it's beautiful hmm. number one uh, but uh I do think that like a deeper meaning of life if someone is interested is uh, or along the lines of like what the hell is all this mm -hmm. and like why and if you look at the into fundamental physics and the quantum field theory and the standard model they're like way they're very complicated and um, there's this like you know 19 free param parameters of our universe and like what's going on with all this stuff 
and why is it here and can I hack it? Can I work with it? Is there a message for me? Am I supposed to create a message? And so I think there's some fundamental answers there. Uh, but I think there's actually even like, you can't actually like really make dent in those without more time. And so to me also there's a big question around just getting more time, honestly. Yeah, that's kind of like what I think about quite a bit as well. So kind of the ultimate, or at least first way to sneak up to the why question is to try to escape uh, the system, the universe. Yeah. And then for that, you sort of uh, backtrack and say, okay, for that, that's going to be take a very long time. So the why question boils down from an engineering perspective to how do we extend? Yeah, I think that's the question number one, practically speaking, because you can't, uh, you're not going to calculate the answer to the deeper questions in the time you have. And that could be extending your own lifetime or extending just the lifetime of human civilization. Uh, of whoever wants to. Not Many people might not want that. Yeah. Uh, but I think people who do want that, I think um, I think it's probably possible. Uh, and I don't, th I don't know that people fully realize this. I kind of feel like people think of death as an inevi inevitability. Yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, this is a physical system. Some things go wrong. Uh, it makes sense why things like this happen, evolutionarily speaking. And uh, there's most certainly interventions that uh, that mitigate it. <laughs> That'd be interesting if death is eventually looked at as as uh, a fascinating thing that used to happen to humans. I don't think it's unlikely. I think it's I think it's likely. And it, it's uh, up to our imagination to try to predict what the world without death looks like. Yeah, it's hard to. I think the values will completely change. Could be. I don't, I don't really buy all these ideas that, oh, without death, there's no meaning, there's nothing as... I, I don't intuitively buy all those arguments. I think there's plenty of meaning, plenty of things to learn. They're interesting, exciting. I want to know, I want to calculate. Uh, I want to improve the condition of all the humans and organisms that are alive. Yeah, the way we find meaning might change. We, there is a lot of humans, probably including myself, that finds meaning in the finiteness of things. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that's the only source of meaning. Yeah. I do think many people will will go with that, which I think is great. I, I love the idea that people can just choose their own adventure. Like you you are born as a conscious free entity by default, I'd like to think. Yeah. And um, you have your unalienable rights for <laughs> life. Uh, in the pursuit of happiness. Pursuit. I, I don't know if <laughs> you have uh, that. You know, in the nature, the landscape of happiness. And you can choose your own adventure mostly. And that's not, <laughs> not fully true, but I still am pretty sure I'm an NPC. But <laughs> um, an NPC can't know it's an NPC. Mm. There could be different degrees and levels of consciousness. I don't think there's a more beautiful way to end it. <laughs> uh, Andre, you're an incredible person. I'm really honored you would talk with me. Everything you've done for the machine learning world, for the AI world, to just inspire people, to educate millions of people. It's been it's been great and I can't wait to see what you do next. It's been an honor, man. Thank you so much for talking today. Awesome, thank you. Thanks for listening to this conversation with Andre Karpathy. To support this podcast, please check out our sponsors in the description. And now, let me leave you with some words from Samuel Carlin. The purpose of models is not to fit the data, but to sharpen the questions. Thanks for listening and hope to see you next time.